We shift focus onto this exciting, exciting piece of information now. A hundred marathons in a hundred days. That's the goal of international water advocate and ultra marathon runner Mina Guli. She's attempting the incredible feat to highlight the global water crisis. Guli started with the New York Marathon on the 4th of November and has been running a marathon, get this, every single day since then across the world. She's now in Cape Town for the South African leg of her challenge and joins us now. It's such an honor to be in conversation with you. One can only imagine how tired you are, so we really appreciate your time. 100 marathons every single day you are practically running. Let's start with this. Why water? Um, because water is one of the biggest issues facing our society. Most people, don't, most people in the world don't know that experts predict that by 2030 there's going to be a 40% greater demand for water than the supply of water available. I think in places like right here in Cape Town, a lot of people really understand that water is a scarce resource. And my goal in running in these, in these places is to show not only that we have a problem, but to raise awareness of the problem around the world, to take the stories of places like Cape Town out to the world through the voices of local people and to say to the world, we have a water problem and we need to join together as one community, as one society around the world and say, let's save water, not just for us for now, but for the next generation and for generations to come. Indeed. You have been to a number of countries uh, around the world. France, Italy, Uzbekistan, uh, Hong Kong, China, and the list goes on. And you still have some way to go because you're also heading out uh, to Lesotho, our neighbors, in a few days. When you get to these countries, what is it uh, that you say to people and what's been the response uh, from people? I think uh, there are a couple of things that n normally come up in the conversations. Um, the first is really to highlight that water is the fundamental building block of our societies and our economies. We think in big cities, even places like Cape Town, that when we turn on the tap, water will come out. Uh, I noticed in places like New York and Paris and Rome and some of these big cities, it, people it, just expect that you turn on the tap and water is there. We often forget that water actually goes into everything we use and buy and consume every day. So water goes into the clothes that we wear, the food that we eat, the power that goes into our computers and our lights. If you think about just what you're wearing today, the great outfit took more water to make than all the water you have drunk in your entire lifetime. And I think when we, when we think about water, we forget that it really powers everything we are and everything we will be in the future. So I, I meet people along the way. I talk to farmers in places like uh, France and I've spoken to fishermen in places like Uzbekistan about their experience in water and their experience in water crises. Everything from groundwater pollution to in Uzbekistan, there's a massive sea called the Aral Sea. And I ran to this sea through inches of dirt and dust and sand and mud which stuck to my shoes and went everywhere. And I spoke to the fishermen and they were telling me just how much the Aral Sea has been pushed out. So it used to be the fourth biggest inland ocean in the world and it's now less than 10% of, of its original size. You can run from 200 kilometres from where the port used to be to where the Aral Sea is now and that's happened over 30 years. And I think, you know, really understanding that when water is a building block and when we are using it faster than it can be replenished, we're going to end up with societies like mm -hmm. the society around Moynak at the Aral Sea, which has collapsed from an economic perspective, from a business perspective, from a jobs and growth perspective. And all of these things, have this has become a microcosm and an example of what I think is going to be the problem going forward unless we arrest this overuse of water. So my, the big message I have for everyone is we need to save water, not just in places like Cape Town, but around the world. We cannot afford to take water for granted. We need to make saving water famous, and we need to make it so famous it's not just the right thing to do, it becomes the only thing to do. Sure, Mina, you really get it when you paint that picture when they say that the next biggest war will be fought uh, over water. Let's talk about the marathons that you run. Just how many kilometers do you run every single day? 
42.2 kilometers. When you say it, it sounds like really crazy, okay? <laughs> um, but when I came up with this idea, the reason why I chose, <laughs> and it was even more crazy because I'm not actually a very good runner. And I know that, that South Africa is the home to some amazingly good athletes, and that's not me. I'm just a normal person who said, I just want to stand up and, and do something to raise awareness about this issue. And I chose to do it by running. I chose to do it by marathons because it's the closest distance to 40 and 40% 40 is the number that experts predict that we will be greater than our supplies available of water. Mm -hmm. It's also 40% of people around the world right now are suffering from some kind of water crisis. So I, I, for me, this is about the symbolism of water. It's actually not about running. So when people are like you ask me, oh yeah, it's how far are you running every day? And I say <laughs> it, it just sounds a bit crazy. <laughs> but yes, I'm running a marathon every day. Yeah. Um, so you guys celebrate at Christmas I was running you have New Year's Eve I'll still be running the seasons will change I'll still be running it just yeah it seems a bit surreal yeah but it's true yeah and I, I get it because you never also want to overstate uh, your uh, own accomplishments but you're doing a great job and this is such an important uh, topic and an important issue uh, I just want you to perhaps just give us a, a message in closing up uh, the conversation in terms of what it takes mentally physically you You've spoken about why this is important for the world, uh, but let's talk about you and your well-being. Who fills your cup or what fills your cup? The next generation. I can honestly tell you that when things get tough and now today is marathon number 55, so things are definitely tough. Um, we've passed the halfway mark, but as one of my team said to me yesterday, don't forget, we've passed the halfway mark, but you've still got 45 marathons mm. to go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> like, thanks for the reminder. Um, so things, things are tough, things are hard, I'm hurting, I'm tired, uh, and it is a, it's a huge task that I've set myself. But sometimes it takes crazy, sometimes it takes identifying big goals and going out and achieving them to change the world. And in answer to your question, the thing that allows me to do this, the thing that powers me, everybody always asks, the thing that really helps me to get across the line is knowing what kind of world I want to leave for the next generation. Mm -hmm. And that is a world where there's enough water for everyone forever. So when things get tough, I think about the faces of kids, I think about communities of children, I think about all the schools I go and speak to, the kids I run with in places like India and China and in places like Africa where I have throngs of children coming and telling me we want a better future we want a future where there is we have enough water for all of us forever not just for now but so that we can achieve our dreams now and and in the future and so if there's one thing that keeps me going it's knowing that I am somehow inspiring those children I am somehow creating a better world for them and that hopefully that better world means that we have enough water security always. Only those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world actually do. Mina Guli, such a pleasure chatting to you. Thank you very much and all the best uh, with the long journey ahead.